Hey guys, I got a little iFlight Sedora drone here. Um, I placed a thermal camera. It was supposed to be an Axis flying camera. I'll show you all later. I ordered it from RC Drone. It was on sale, a little deal. And I wanted a drone that would, you know, record thermal imaging so we can possibly see deer and use it for tracking deer that's been shot before sending my little dog in to track um, to get an idea of where the deer at or possibly just find a deer without having to trample through the woods too much but I got this on an Avatar um, Moonlight VTX the camera I had put a little VTX um, on here for the thermal camera because it is analog and it's a rush tiny tank that I'm using on this one um, had a little issue to I flat stack when I hooked up the camera the thermal camera runs like high voltage you can have high voltage on it and I'm running it off of the VBAT also my moonlight VTX is running off of the VBAT um, and when I hooked up my 5 volt, so this drone flew well before I started all this. And I put in, you know, an ELRS receiver and hooked it up and I got it flying, you know, it was flying well. So the VTX, I got it hooked up on a 5 volt as well. So both of those run off a of 5 volt and then for some reason the drone wouldn't work. So I ended up having to change, I changed the receiver on it, but that wasn't the issue. For some reason, I guess, maybe after hooking up all this voltage and drawing all this voltage off of the flight controller, or the flight controller just got a little old and the 5 volt rail went weak on it and I was pulling like 4.93 volts and the receiver kept resetting, wouldn't arm. Um, so that's something to think about if you want to try one of these builds and the main thing is i just wanted to get this thing going but i'm going to drop all the specs to the drone in the comments on the video i'm running a rush tank a rush cherry antenna on the rush tiny tank vtx for the analog which is hooked to the thermal i had to set up the vtx you know you still have to download the files for running the smart audio because i do have it hooked up to smart audio i done tested it with my goggles x and i'll show you all y'all that set up here in a minute but um i tested the camera i had it in the bathroom i was recording and i could see my legs and all when i got it working and when you had i had my foot down on the floor i moved it after a few seconds there and you could still see the heat on the floor for where my foot was just from like two three seconds and this is the cheaper camera so i'm not going to have a big image but hopefully it works well and i'll upgrade it if it does later on um i'm going to go i just wanted to show y'all how it was set up but i ended up having to run a 5 volt regulator in here because I couldn't never get the receiver to work after putting all this on this drone um, and I'm going to be running this off of a 1300 milliamp 5s battery and hopefully it's you know stays stable and coast for a long time and just hovers well I did have to flash to beta flight 4.6 because I wanted altitude hold on this drone so I could just click that button on there and have it on hold for a while while I swap from the goggles X back to the analog and able to see both of them up there I'm gonna have my phone hooked up with the camera pro app as well I done tested it and I'm able to screen record off of it so you can see the swapping, the filming, and you know, with the small image on the thermal, I hope when I get pretty high, I can see a pretty good area. 
Uh, hopefully I got everything set back up right after flashing to 4.6 because you know you got to use the browser to hook up the 4.6 and Betaflight used to have an altitude hold I believe because I, I built a drone years ago and was able to do it but then um, got to looking for it this time I couldn't figure it out and then found out you know it was gone and then they added it back in 4.6 and I'm pretty sure I'm correct on that correct me if I'm wrong but I remember that I had a drone set up that would hold with the barometer on there um but I got a lot of stuff on this drone it's kind of stacked out wires everywhere I want to tuck it back in there neat set it up but I am worried about the moonlight VTX overheating if I'm just hovering and it's kind of warm outside because it will do that and it will stop recording if that's the case um, but my main area I'm wanting to see is the thermal camera uh, I don't have GPS I never really use GPS on drones so hopefully I won't be flying it far because I try not to break no rules with my drones on so I'm not for sure how well the thermal camera will work but RC drone kind of had a little false advertisement up there. I'll show you that picture in the video as well as what I ordered and then what I received. This a U01 thermal camera is what I received. It does handle more voltage than the first one I was looking at. So that's a good thing. But the camera just don't look as nice as the one I was looking at. It, it beats paying $5,000 for a drone. I'll tell you that. So right now, the value of this drone, as I got it built, you know, is around probably $700. And that's with the thermal camera, the Moonlight VTX. The iFlight stack also has Bluetooth. Uh, so I forgot to mention one thing. Um, I did a camera. I printed this mount for this camera and messed up on it. I measured the wrong bolt holes. But... I wanted this camera facing straight down because that's what we're going to be looking at straight down on the ground when we're tracking and I had to cut the mount and spin it around to make it work and I'm going to go back and redesign that soon but I just want to was ready to get this thing together I printed these long arms on here these landing pads or legs whatever you want to call them so when I come down I'm not hitting my little $260 camera on the ground and I got some clearance in there before it touches down and you can see that on there as well at first I had an OSD on my walk snail um, after flashing the four, beta flight 4.6 I ended up with the OSD on the analog which is great because it works out better that way um, that's the camera we'll be focusing on looking straight down and we'll be able to tell when our battery is getting dead or altitude and everything while we're focusing on the ground so that's a great thing but this is the final build you know I got my antennas set up here from my walk snail and then I got my analog antenna back here I'm running the channels I think I got it on channel 7 for my walk snail and then I'm running race band one on my analog VTX and I'm going to be running that at 200 milliwatts first for testing and I think I got it on 500 or 700 on the walk snail and you'll probably be able to see all that when I'm setting it up all that got zip ties on there just because of the legs to hold the front I printed the legs as you can see split the motors and the screw holds the front, zip tie holds the back. Um, but this is a pretty awesome build. All right, my Goggles X. I got an aero system antennas on here for my analog adapter. I have the expansion module put on here as well just the stock antennas on three and then i got one left hand patch antenna so i can get a little distance out there hopefully and you know i like these goggles they're great for freestyle and penetration and all that and just a great video coming out of it on the feed 
All right, the radio I'm going to be using is the Jumper T15. Um, I really like this radio. I got it in Street League. And, you know, this over here, this little monetary button um, is great for boost. And I got my arm switch here. I think I got my altitude hold. I'm using this button here because it stays standard. So when I hit it, altitude hold my beeper is here arm and then i'm also got my mode set up i do have a angle mode set up on here called when altitude hold goes in you know it's gonna go to angle mode and also flip over at the crash i got it all set up all right guys we're getting out here to get ready for the maiden flight um T15 jumper, my analog slash HD thermal image and drone, 5S battery on top, and trying to make sure I'm not missing nothing y'all may need, but if we run down to it and y'all got any questions, just ask in the video and I'll help you along if you want to build one of these. So we know we got the adapter, the HDMI video capture um, to go into my phone. To work with the um, camera pro app so I can record and this is confirmed it will record the video from the analog and also from my goggles X my goggles X on the other hand is going to be recording the 4k on the moonlight and I think it's going to record the 4k on the moonlight the entire time and I'm going to be swapping you know how we hold down our button to swap from walk snail to analog for a few seconds. And I'm going to be swapping mid-flight and hope this works. So I can flip from my analog back to my HD and everything is good. This is what I ordered and this is what I received right here. So not correct on advertisement. All right, we got this thing um, set up pretty well, and it flies good so far. And this is the smart audio showing here. Um, when I first set it up, I had the smart audio was showing up on the walk snail, and it worked on the walk snail for some reason. But when I flashed over to 4.6 and back again, somehow. I got it back on the analog, which is better because when you're coasting out there with the um, thermal camera looking down, you need to see your voltage because one point I did kill the battery and wasn't paying attention and it just, you know, come down. But luckily it was an easy landing and nothing got damaged. This is showing the altitude hold. And now I'm going to change video. And this is about how long you got to wait for it to pick back up and go analog from walk snail. Um, as you can see there, that's just a field across the road. And that's a road there. But this thing works pretty good. I was surprised. And I did fix my video signal issue. I had it like 35 watts and 25 watts or something. I had a little issue with the VTX and had the wrong table on there so I couldn't get the full power out of it. I can only get a max of 300 now, but this is still a lot better. And that's a trailer with a lawnmower on it below there. And it just getting kind of close to the ground right here. But I'm ready to see this thing on in some action over some woods. There is one point, and that's a little landing pad, a little small the you know the video size isn't large at all but you know it's okay for the price for the camera because even cameras are pretty expensive in just a moment i'll be walking up under the drone but the bad thing is you'll start seeing the camera the video break up a little bit because i set my goggles down and i set them straight down on the boat and walked out there but there i am walking under a drone looking up at it
So this is after I got my throttle, hover throttle set correctly. Um, and before when I armed the Alto 2 hold, the drone would drop some. And so I figured out from watching a video from you, AV Tech, that you can increase that value. And when you arm the altitude hold, then it maintains steady. Um, you got to be careful if you have your throttle up during altitude hold and you're moving your throttle and you push it way up and then you disarm altitude hold, then your drone's going to shoot straight up in the air. Or if you have the throttle all the way down, and you disarm it you're going to drop so be aware of that and just try to keep your throttle somewhere in the hover limit and that way it won't go crazy and do crazy stuff when you disarm it or arm it um for the altitude hold this is a good shot um that beta flight 4.6 is pretty smooth holding on there Right here is where I had the little issue and let the battery die out too much on me. This next image is an image of me and two vehicles when I was first playing with it and first testing the camera image. Then my wife, she hates the drones. 